insert Finding Nemo clip here. Hello everyone and welcome back to Scooping Poop with Vivian. I want to die. All right, so today we're going to go over a video that has been buzzing in my mind for super duper long. For some reason, parents, they're like, hi, you're my child, I love you so much, in order to give you a present, to teach you about responsibility and the circle of life, I'm going to buy you a living creature and see what happens. I wonder what will happen. All right, so let me just tell you, this video is not meant to criticize anybody. I'm not a parent, actually no, I am a parent. I am a single mother of over 25 children. It's a hard knock life. But seriously, I can't tell you how to teach your kid because you're just gonna yell at me. But I am just simply saying that for some reason, if you do want to introduce pets to kids, here are the most common pets that are typically given to children and why it's a horrible idea. So number one, we're going to start with fish. Insert Finding Nemo clip here. So it's a very typical situation that I see super duper often. You know, a parent brings their bratty children to a pet store. They get a 10 gallon tank, a cheap ass filter, sometimes a filter actually. The kid picks out a bunch of horrible, ugly looking SpongeBob thing decorations. And on the same day, they pick up the fish. To be honest, I'm not even gonna go into like fish keeping etiquette just to say how many things are wrong with the things I just said. However, to all the parents out there, here are the reasons why you don't wanna give your children fish as a first pet. First of all, fish actually have long lifespans. The most common pet fish I see get bought are goldfish. Goldfish, when taken care of properly, can live over 20 years. So if your kid is not going to like want the goldfish when you're 30, you probably shouldn't give them something like that. And you're probably thinking, well, you know, the fish is gonna die anyways, right? That's actually a horrible and really toxic mentality. Because if you think about it, if you got your kid a dog and just expected the child to have fun with the dog, and you know the dog can live 15, 20 years, but if your child is taking care of it, the dog is not gonna make it through its first week and you're like, that's fine. Obviously more people are gonna have a problem with that, but why don't we see the same thing with fish? Fish feel pain? I mean, just because they don't have, you know, facial expressions doesn't mean they can't feel pain and suffer. So my whole point is fish are actually a very long-term commitment depending on the species and it's important that you as a parent understands that and never view them as a throwaway pet. In fact, there's no such thing as a throwaway pet unless you have like a pet rock, which do whatever you want with the rock. The other reason why is that fish keeping is actually very, very hard. Now here's the thing, a lot of people think that fish are a good beginner pet for anyone because they're easy, they're low maintenance, and although it's true that they're not going to require the same stimulation per se, um, compared to some pets, they are definitely not easy pets. Ask any serious fish keeper, it is not easy keeping fish. You have to deal with cycling the tank, which if you don't know what cycling a tank is, turn your car around. Don't get a peco, just just go back home, go back home. And you have to do weekly water changes, sometimes even more often depending on the type of fish you have. And you have to maintain proper pH. You have to make sure all your parameters are all good. You have to test the water on a weekly basis. You have to buy high quality food, sometimes live food. And it's a whole process. And not to mention that your fish does get sick. Your resources are very, very limited as most veterinarians do not see small fish. So essentially you will have to self-diagnose and go out and buy medication, which is a whole nother video. Like it's just, it's hard. So honestly, fish are a horrible pet for children and a horrible beginner pet in general. I find that if you do your research, fish can be super, super rewarding and they're not necessarily difficult pets, but you're definitely not for children, trust me. I say probably the second most common pets are hamsters. Now hamsters are bought for a similar reason. You know, they think short lifespan, small cage, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna be easy for the kid to take care of it. But hamsters are really, really bad ideas. So if you know anything about the hamster community, you know how serious people are about hamsters because hamsters are amazing. Now the big problem with hamsters is the fact that most people keep them in a cage that's way too small. Now, kind of similar to fish, but in a different way, hamster care is very, very much controlled and manipulated by the mass media and also pet stores themselves. 
you know, we see packaging that's colorful and bright and adorable that makes everything look luxurious, like it's accessible for hamsters. However, most of these things do not even meet the bare necessities. So at least in America, the typical recommended minimum cage size for a hamster is 450 square inches. Now, if you don't know how big that is, that's pretty big. <laughs> because compared to most pet store cages you see, that is less than a fourth of the minimum required size. And no, you cannot just buy a bunch of small cages, connect them together and call it a day because it has to be 450 continuous square inches of floor space. If you actually do the research about hamsters, it's actually very, very complicated. They need wheels that are a lot bigger, they need proper housing, they need proper bedding, and they also need proper diet. There's so many things that go into it and people don't realize that hamsters are much more complex than their dumb little faces seem. <laughs> Hamsters, however, do have a much shorter lifespan compared to most other fish. Hamsters typically have a lifespan about two to three years-ish. And so because of that, people take it for granted and think, well, you know, because they live for just a small amount of time, my kids just gonna have some fun with it and it'll all be over. But you don't realize that those two to three years stretch on for super duper long. If your hamster ever gets sick, it's actually very abusive and ne 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 negligent to just leave it alone without taking it to a vet because honestly, that's just straight up animal abuse right there. With any animal who's suffering, not solving that problem is wrong, obviously. Like, again, there's so many more things that could go on about proper hamster care, but let me just tell you that seriously, if you want to give your child a hamster or gerbil or mouse or any kind of small rodent type animal, definitely reconsider it. I know that hamsters can actually be really good family pets depending on the species and depending on who's actually taking care of it. If an adult is taking proper care of the hamster or like a teen or something like that, we're all good to go. Let the kid play with the hamster once in a while as long as you're being gentle. But definitely do not expect your child to be able to take care of a hamster because most children are too stupid to comprehend stuff. Now the last pet I want to talk about are baby turtles. I know that's, that seems really specific and I actually have an entire like long list of bad pets but honestly I really want to nail down this one because I see it so so common and often and it becomes a normal occurrence for parents to do this although it's so so wrong. So please tell me at one point, maybe on the streets or in a pet store or some kind of shady like dark alley, you see people selling these tiny baby turtles that are about this big. These are most of the time red ear sliders. And what people do not know is that those turtles do not stay this big. They cannot live in the plastic container that they come in. And they are probably the worst decisions of your life. These turtles are honestly such intelligent and complex creatures. First of all, they can get over like 12 inches long. So it's just big boy. Can we just imagine that first? And second of all, obviously because of your size, you're going to eventually have to upgrade to a huge aquarium. And I'm talking about at least a 120 gallon aquarium with a land area. So that's huge and it's going to cost you a lot of money. And besides that, what people don't understand about these turtles, not only is it hard to care for, because based on what I just said, hopefully if you're a parent thinking about baby turtles, automatically in your head that's no longer an option. But I really want to talk about this because by buying a turtle, you're thinking it's harmless, but you're actually supporting a huge culture of this animal abuse and negligence towards red ear sliders. Red ear sliders are bred very, very commonly. They're mass produced everywhere in North America and have actually become an invasive species because people are like, yeet, no. And they throw them into like ponds and rivers and these turtles have actually taken over and started messing with the natural wildlife of North America. Now, honestly, I don't want to blame these turtles because they look so adorable and cute. But the thing is, people just do not know how to take care of them. And by buying these turtles, you're not only supporting an industry that does not care about the well-being of these turtles at all. Like, come on. They're on the side of the street selling turtles in a plastic container this big. Like, are you going to argue with me here? Like, it's obviously these people don't give a fuck. It's obviously these people don't give a crap about where these turtles go. So you're supporting a horrible, horrible culture. It's in fact, it's, it's equivalent to like poppy mills, honestly. But these turtles don't live for like, you know, 20 years like a dog would. These turtles live over 20 years. These turtles can outlive adults sometimes, okay? Red ear sliders 
don't have the longest lifespan of all turtles, but I'm just saying that like most reptiles, like most turtles, they're going to have a very long lifespan and you're going to be stuck with them. So honestly, with all these pets I mentioned, definitely, definitely do your research like I always say, and definitely understand that no child, like child, I mean like under like 12 or 13-ish, is going to be able to take care of these animals on their own without any kind of parental help. And honestly, if you want to teach your kid about responsibility, if you want to get a pet for yourself and you're primarily taking care of them while allowing the child to help out once in a while, like I feel like that's much better. If you want to teach about, you know, life and death, don't get a goldfish, don't get a turtle because you're probably going to die before them. <laughs> but you kind of get my point, right? So honestly, if you want to teach your kids about responsibility, pet is probably not the best way to go. Allowing your kid to interact with animals as long as you are taking care of the responsibility aspect, that's totally chill. And honestly, that's how I got into animals. I love animals so, so much. And now that I'm able to like take care of them and keep them, I now understand why kids like them so much. But the thing is, it's just not the most responsible thing to do. So hopefully you guys like this video. If you do, leave a like because I would heavily appreciate that. Also comment down below if you know any parents who like get all three of these things and make them live together. I don't know. So yeah, definitely tell me about your horror stories if you know any. Also tell me if you're a parent and if this video helped at all. And I'll see you guys in the next video I make. Bye! <laughs>